uh, just a few words about the director. <coughs> he was a very good friend. And uh, at the beginning, he didn't like all the, the dissect, dissecting of her films. And he didn't agree uh, with, the, with my dissection, lah, talking about the terminology, using terminology, and so on. But then, <coughs> then slowly she began to realize that she was actually doing something instinctively that all of us had to learn. And then uh, I'm, I was gratified because she mentioned on her blog that I was one of her three gurus. <laughs> oh, how can you teach uh, Yasmin Ahmad? She's in a class of her own. Okay, um, her first two films, actually the first one was Rabun, but it was meant for TV, but it has a film format. Second one was Sepet, and the third one is Gubra. So I told her that Sepet and Gubra are not bad, but they are also not good, because she was trying to deliver a message inverted commas eh? you do not deliver messages through films if you want to send a message send an sms <laughs> or send a letter to the, <laughs> the postman the purpose of a feature film for the cinema is to entertain that's number one only uh, number two you have something to say but never call it a message so both these firms had a message being sent across. So that's why for me, they don't work as firms. Now, when I commented after the moment the firm is edited, I'm the one she calls uh, and she never listened to me. My comments about Sepet and uh, Gubra. Then she had all the flack. Then from Mohsen onwards, I'll be the only one to see it at the moment it's edited. But it's not to say that if she made a change, it was because of me, no. I only told her, and when she makes a decision, it's because she understood what I was saying. So it's entirely hers. The only comment I had was for Mo'alaf. I said, your last scene does not work. Your graph is going down. And you know, she, she was so stressed because she had never reshot. But that was the only film where she reshot a scene, but not where I had commented upon. And then it worked. Anyway, Gubra uh, means anxiety. <clears throat> and uh, there's something that people overlook. Did you see the last scene after the credit titles rolled? What? <laughs> there is one last scene. Oh. After all the credit titles, this is the bad culture in Malaysia, <laughs> including the cinemas. As the music comes up and the title, everybody starts to leave and the lights come on. Very bad culture. I once yelled in Finas. Put out the bloody light, I said. Oh, they all got scared. <laughs> In Europe, everybody sits stock still until the last fade out. They have a proper culture. Here is haywire. <laughs> okay, so uh, my, I'll be basing on this, taking on the attributes of God. What are the attributes of God? He is all seeing, all hearing, etc., etc. And also he is the merciful and the compassionate. So this is what I'll be talking on eh? next. So since it's the Ramadan, you have to ask ourselves, are we only really Muslims in Ramadan? How about outside of Ramadan? We go back to our old wicked ways. What happens? 
it means we have not been guided. So all of Yasmin Ahmad's films are guides for us as to how to live. So Aristotle, 2,500 years ago, said, stories are all about how men should live their lives. So um, when a writer writes, he's basing it on reality, on things that he knows. And Tugo Karya, a very famous Indonesian film director, who has since died, a Chinese Catholic, when I asked him what cinema was to him, he said, I put you among the characters on the screen. If you can see yourself among the characters, I have succeeded. And it's basically what Andre Bazin, a very famous film philosopher, said in the 1940s. The cinema is like a window through which we spy upon the lives of others that reflect our own lives. So we are seeing ourselves on the screen. And sometimes you will see that films are also self-reflexive where the director is speaking about himself. Uh, was it Oscar Wilde who said that uh, a portrait, I don't know, what is it, a painting is a portrait of the artist himself, something like that. So when he paints a portrait of somebody, it's actually, he's actually painting himself. The kind of lighting, the kind of look, the way he uses the paint and so on. Eh? It's actually the artist, it's not the person that he painted. Or oh, there's something very, very interesting eh? that I only discovered late in life. Because I was not born an artist, but I love art. And after copying and copying, and guess who I was copying? I was copying the masters. And if you're copying the masters, how can you go wrong? So, I'll come to this later. Next. But first, some theory to give you a headache. Next. So, I'll be talking about the language of images. This is a language, the visual language, that all people in the world are using. And it is almost exactly the same thing. So, Carl Jung, the psychologist, he said something about the collective unconscious that all of us are taking from one source. We give it a simpler word, uh, term, God. God is giving everyone in the world the same thing. So, next, I'll be talking about semiotics. Sounds like a strange word. Has anybody heard about this? Who has heard of the word semiotics? Of course, Lucy would have. Anybody else? A lot of people study about semiotic in the university, but they can't make head or tail out of it. They simply cannot understand what it is. I've met so many. And my daughter came home. She said, Dad, my teacher is talking about semiotic. Nobody understands him. Because he did not know how to teach. And I gave a lecture about semiotics in a university uh, in Volda, Norway. One of the lecturers came to me, he was from the UK. He said, I've been trying to teach semiotic to my students in literature, nobody understands me. But you made it so simple. Can you do it for my students tomorrow? So I got paid extra. So it's very important, it's something that we are actually doing every day without knowing that there is a theory to it. So it's from a Greek word. And it's about the use of signs and symbols in society. Every society has got its own way of presenting things. If I do this, what do you think it means? Good? Some more? What? Positive. Positive? Ah. Okay, where? I only see my thumb, what? <laughs> if I do this? Direction. Oh la, my finger. <laughs> so how did you get the word direction? Where did that come from? 
Where did good come from or positive or you are great? Where did that come from? Okay, something shared within a group. Okay, but if you uh, did this to maybe these natives living in uh, New Guinea somewhere, where I've never met people, they would not understand it, isn't it? Yeah. So it's got to be something that we all agree upon. So what is this? It's a symbol. What is this? It's an index. So icon next. So icon is following the rules, whereas an index is slightly breaking the rules and a symbol is totally breaking the rules. What does it mean? Next. So an icon clearly represents what we are talking about. For instance, if I'm going to show you a film and I'm saying that this film is about animals in the jungle. So what do you expect to see? Animals in the jungle. Absolutely no problem. I don't have to explain things to you. But because we are filmmakers, we are artists, we don't want to be too direct. So we will start to go into the index. So we start with a black screen and then we have the sound of a tiger. What would you expect to see after that? A tiger. So instead of showing a tiger first, we give an indication of a tiger. What happens if we hear the sound of a tiger and the next shot is of a cat? <laughs> audience wondering what's going on, isn't it? You will confuse your audience unless your film is a parody or a satire. So that's a different thing. Eh? Let's not go into that. So an index resembles what you are talking about. For instance, next. Yes, example. Eh? I'm talking about a car. So if I am using an icon, I will show the stupid car. I don't have to say this is a car. But I don't want to show the car first. I can show an index. That means a close up of parts of the car. You know that it is a car, but you are not very sure. Maybe it's a washing machine, isn't it? So then slowly you go into, next will be the close-up of the logo. Ah, people say this is definitely a car. And then the last shot will be the actual car. There are so many ways of doing it. All right, but you got to understand when and how. Next example. So if I'm talking about a man, I will show a man or I can start by showing his shadow or I can give a symbol. Not many people will know what this represents, isn't it? But if you show this and that, it's more clear. So if you're making a film for a mainstream audience, do not go too much into this because they can't grasp it. But Yasmin has got a lot of symbols. Except that it is not being told to you directly. It's up to you to decipher. But she also appeals to our sentiment, which is not good. A true firm, a firm, when we talk about firm as firm, you do not mess with the sentiment of the audience. They must come to their own conclusions without you manipulating their emotions. But ultimately, all films are, is about manipulating. You can't get away from it. Because once you arrange things in a certain manner, this is the conclusion that you come to. But of course, there are so many ways of doing it. Eh? Next. What happens if I have the man and his shadow? Now I'm going into index, which is there is something wrong with this man because now he has become two. This is not good. And if I have his face dark one side, something wrong with him. Now I'm taking the meaning to another level. Right? And uh, what's the other one? 
uh, I can give you a lot more examples, but let's go to Yasmin's viewing here. So the language of ima images begins with something called mise en scène. It's a French word. It means here's the fr frame, the, the camera frame, we find there. How does the director fill that frame? It's got left, right, top, bottom, center. And whatever is in that frame has got a meaning. So this is the director's secret that he or she will never reveal. And this is why many directors are very, uh, they don't like me. Why? Because I expose the, their secrets. But I'm happy to say two world famous directors applauded me when I analyzed their films. One is Chai Ming Liang. I'm sure you know Chai Ming Liang. Nobody heard of him. He's a Sarawakian working in Taiwan. He's world famous. I interviewed him on Astro A list. And when I analyzed his film, he looked at me with wide eyes. And he said, Mr. Hassan is very perceptive. He understands cinema. So that was a compliment. The other one is Xie Fei, one of the masters of Chinese cinema. When I invited him to Malaysia, then I analyzed his film to students. I looked at him, he was smiling, and he was doing this to me. <laughs> and then he gave me six of his DVDs. He says, please use it. And we are going to screen those films here in November. All right. So, mise-en-scene. Let's have a look at how uh, Yasmin uses mise-en-scene. Next. So before I go to actually analyzing Gubra, let's look at some of the scenes. The first one is a scene of her leaving the conjugal bed. That is a very nasty sign. That is the worst thing that can happen in a marriage. And the next scene is the film Rabun being shown on TV and she is now on the sofa looking at the scene and then she falls asleep but the next shot instead of going to some other place it shows the cinema screen again at uh, the tv screen the story is continuing who is watching in just this four uh, stills so much is being said so we are in index the icons are there it's a TV set, it's a drama. Uh, here's her with a, um, what do you call, the pillow and a blanket. Here's a sofa. It's all very clear, but that's not what they mean. All have been arranged to indicate something. And there's an element of symbolism. What is it? <coughs> what is she thinking? What do you think she's thinking when she's watching this scene? From a film made by Yasmin Ahmad called Rabun, where a husband and wife are bathing together, and she is actually bathing him, and there's a, I think a Hindustani song, if I'm not mistaken. And then she's pouring water over his head. What is the relationship? Uh, this is where you go into the amb ambiguity le uh, level, eh? so you got it's all symbolic. What do you think, anybody? What do you think it means? <coughs> That's how when you want to get maximum enjoyment from a film, you should be asking questions. It doesn't matter if it's totally different from what the director intended, but it's actually coming from your own background your education, your understanding, your perception, and so on. A good film can have many, many interpretations. A bad film has got only one, bad. And the director will love it if you have many, many interpretations. Okay, so she's looking, and it is actually about Yasmin herself. So if you want to know whether an actor is good or not, look at the eyes. So now, 
The husband sees her, you know, he touches her, no response. Then he carries her like a baby, puts her on the bed, still no response. Notice the mise en scene. She is always turned away from him. That means she is aware, she doesn't care because he played her out. And the worst thing you can do is say out that, remember in the, in the car at the beginning, uh, I told your dad that I will look after you and so on. Once it comes out, you better stick to it. Because in a traditional society, your word is your bond. And when somebody raised his crest and said, this crest will bathe in Chinese blood, you cannot take it back anymore. In the film Magnolia, in the film Magnolia, directed by, what's his name? Thomas Paul Anderson, is it? There's a line. You may be through with the past, but the past is not necessarily through with you. So be very careful. So, she's turned away from him, and even though she's holding on and so on, because, you know, otherwise she'll fall off. What else do you notice in the scene that is quite prominent? Yeah? Teddy bear, yes. You think the teddy bear just happened to be there? They bought a teddy bear to put it there. So what does it mean? It's got to do with uh, children, isn't it? It refers to her. She is uh, childlike. She is vulnerable. And he destroyed everything. So Yasmin told me, and no, no, I told her. I said, you know, when a woman loves a man, she gives everything. All right? So she's turning away. See? Now, there's a scene of her parents. What does the wife do for him? Trims the moustache. Ah, no, trims his nose hair. Would you want to do that? No, no way. Uh, uh, trims the moustache and then when he's about to sneeze she puts her hand on him and just takes a tissue paper and just wipes it what does that indicate we are in the second level index she totally loves him ah, yeah and this runs through the film right this scene is actually after this scene where is she, why is she looking to the left? Oh, uh, looking back to the daughter. She's thinking, yes. what about my daughter? Yes. So you see, mise en scène is not only within the frame, but also related to other scenes in the film, beginning or middle. That is not in the books. Next. And immediately after one scene, I uh, can't remember where, was it after the... Uh, Chinese uh, couple makeup. I don't know. It was after. They home after the hospital. Yeah. Ah, the the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There was something before this. The and couple, uh, a Chinese couple, yes. Ah, at the hospital, they hold hands. Hold hands, yes. Uh, Next shot is very important. Eh? Editing does not mean just cutting one shot after another. It's got a relationship and the element of index comes into play. I can tell you, nobody teaches this in Malaysian universities. All right. Why washing the car? The scene is very long, 21 seconds. That is very long for a film scene. So what does it indicate? Anybody? What's that? Wash means buang. All right. When we bathe, we move, remove the dirt, so-called, isn't it? So how does it refer to the uh, Chinese couple? Uh, their marriage is Ah, clever. <laughs> if you watch Hollywood movies, there will very frequently be scenes where bath being taken. 
That means the hero or heroine being reborn. Now realization has come into play. But Yasmin was unusual. The way she... Yeah. So you see, the film language can be manipulated, can be modified, and you can even create your own film language. Where did all this come from? From the history of painting. How did the painters of ancient days know all this? The collective unconscious. That is why the study of painting is very important for film. And I, I mentioned uh, when I presented a paper last year at the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, I said, now we cannot teach art history as art history. It has to be applied art history. Because it's being used in film 100% now. Then we see who is washing the car. Who is it? The, 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 the driver. Yeah. The driver is also a nasty fellow. Yeah. He washes, but he is not washed. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Right, then uh, the, the prostitute goes back to Kampung. The camera is on the sky, comes down, and this is in Kuala Kangsa. This is the only railway station in Malaysia where you have a road right in front, of the main road right in front, and then there's a curve. What can we see here being indicated? The sky is a symbol for God. God decides. And this woman is a prostitute, isn't it? And what does the uh, train station or the railway indicate? The journey of life. Most films, when they show the railway, it means we are on a journey. The person is on a journey. And uh, look at the two boys. When you cast characters for a film, you choose people for a certain purpose, because of the way they look. I acted in a film, I've acted in four feature films, and in one film, directed by Yu Hang, Ho Yu Hang, uh, one of our really good directors, I was chosen. Was it because of my incredible acting ability? I cannot act. And I said... <laughs> and uh, what do you call it? I cannot memorize dialogue. I said, don't give me long dialogue. <laughs> so thankfully, I was given very short dialogue. So uh, everybody was reading the script and they were casting. And somebody asked, who, who can we cast for the inspector? He's got to be tall, he wears a jacket, and he has to look intelligent. <laughs> no need to be intelligent. <laughs> That's firm. Why is it that Hollywood in the 60s, up to the 60s, the bad guys are always Chinese, Korean, or Japanese? Why? Slit eyes. Anybody with slit eyes is the evil guy. So here's one in front of us. <laughs> Why? Because it's a contrast to the Caucasian eyes, which are white. Are there any Caucasian with slit eyes? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Wow, I tell you, there is a huge secret behind this which I shall not reveal. <laughs> Next, you see a cat. Uh, yes. I don't think they brought a cat to let it go. While the shoot was going on, the cat just walked at the back. Now, Yasmin is highly blessed because the same thing happened in, uh, in uh, Talentine, was it? Talentine, where the boy is praying in the mosque, and then two birds hop into frame. And I was talking to Yasmin about it. She said, it's, it's God. I didn't have nothing to do with it. So why do we need animals in the frame? If you want to show whether people are sincere in a film, visually, you have animals or children coming around you. Who has seen the film Sense and Sensibility, directed by Ang Lee? Remember, when the older man who is in love with the girl comes, the, the little girl comes around him and, in the, and he passes this man with dogs. And then in the background, there is water and greenery. So greenery, life, water, purity, 
and animal sincerity. 100% plan for film. Not just happening. In Malaysia, it just happened. Okay, next. So, here are couples. In this film, you have the, the, the Tok Sia and his wife. Then you have the Chinaman. And then the Malay. And then right at the end, ah, this is the scene. Orchid and Jason are in bed. We never saw them together. So what happened? What's going on? We'll come to that later. Next. So now, uh, <laughs> so lecture also must have like a film narrative, must have a structure. So that's uh, parents of uh, Yasmin Ahmad, and uh, that's Yasmin directing the scene. We're reading the Quran and so on. So she is asking us to take on the attributes of God, to be next merciful and compassionate in the name of God. The merciful and the compassionate. How come there are two? What's the difference? God is merciful in the sense that whether you are a China man, you are a Hindu man, you are a Masale man, you ask, he gives. But compassionate, reserved for certain people only. And the surprising thing is, I give you an example. A guy could be a gangster who beats people up, but when he dies, he is saved. How can that happen? The guy who has been praying all his life, but he is not saved. How come? So perhaps this gangster who beats people up, one day, probably he saw a kitten that had fallen into a drain, and without thinking, he went in and took it out, and then looked after it. In the Quran, it says, I created you and your actions. He didn't even realize he was doing it. So, watch certain things happen in your lives. She started the film with this. If God can be merciful and compassionate, why are we not like that? in our relationships with our fellow men, with our wife, with our husband, with our friends. Okay, next. And the following scene is of a very nice Hindustani song of a woman singing a love song for her lover or husband, I don't know. Beautiful song. Where did she get that from? She saw it in a Mamad Khalid TV drama. And she songlap it. Okay. We never see the face of the person who is uh, cutting, uh, preparing the breakfast for the husband. Of course, we don't know whether he's practicing it. But <coughs> what do the elements in the frame tell us about this woman? How do we know that she is a very loving person? Yes, we know. We know that part of it, yes. Some more? The amount of prayer she puts in on the bread. <laughs> <laughs> ah. The nationalistic element. Butter is masale. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, we have two masale here. No, this is an affectionate term. It's no more derogatory. What is the other thing that she adds on? Skaya. Ah, and it's not jam. It's not jam, right? It's not jam, right? jam is also masale. Ah, it's skaya. It's Malaysian. Don't tell the Indonesian. Maybe they they will they, because yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, we can see how you know delicately she does things, isn't it? Look at the flowers everywhere. On her, on the sleeve, on the teapot, everything was planned by the production designer. When he read the script, he knew exactly what to get as props. 
right? Then, of course, ah, uh, this is something that after I saw the film, I told her, I say, you know, husbands are always busy, no time. Even though the wife woke up, he he's supposed to go to the mosque at about maybe about five thirty in the morning. So she will get up at what time? Maybe four thirty. And the idiot has got no time to eat, eat and drink. <laughs> she looked at me. I think I saw a tear in her eye. It must have happened to her. Men never realize how the wife feel. Have you men ever thought about that? <laughs> you see, you see that. You see the amount of things she has put in, and it all comes from her own experience. So you women, what do you think? You have felt that? <laughs> all right, then. Swap to he's in a hurry, but she's playful with him, isn't it? And he gets upset, but then he gets into the spirit of it, and then at the end, he kisses her on the neck. How many men kiss their wife on the? Of course, uh, masale men and women is two different things. Yeah. Uh, but that's not Malaysian culture, isn't it? And where do the uh, husband kiss the wife? Lad said, uh, maybe behind the door. Uh, you know, when he was in in Los Angeles, he was doing his Kampung Boy series. <clears throat> the storyboard they had drawn a uh, real mouth to mouth resuscitation. Okay. Lad said, no, 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 in Malaysia, the husband does not kiss the uh, wife in front of the children. <laughs> and they look at him, then where, where, where do they kiss? Or maybe behind the door or in the room. <laughs> and they look at him and say, what kind of country are you living in? <laughs> it's not their culture. So of course, he, you know, they deleted that scene. But in Nikah, sometimes, the husband will kiss the forehead. Do you people know what that means? Respect and love. No? <laughs> it will take one whole day to speak about that. <laughs> Next. You know why the Hindu women put the dot on the knee? The third eye. And Buddhists and Hindus believe that only if you are reborn as a man can you attain to enlightenment. Too bad for you women. Don't argue about this one. I can tell you that it's a fact. <laughs> Lucy, your culture is gone. Eh? <laughs> Alright, now. The thing I told you about how Gubra wants to deliver a message. The moment you have a religious guy living somewhere near a prostitute, so on, message. It's too direct. So that's something that you, could, you cannot do in film. But you see, uh, standing and talking together is okay. That means he does not discriminate. That means he is spiritual. So being religious does not mean you are spiritual. But being spiritual means you are religious. So a lot of people run around with uh, tudong, with a skull cap, uh, with rope and so on. Do you think they actually have it? God decides. And then, the son. Is it a son from a marriage? Or is it a son born because a, she's a prostitute? It's never told to us. But she loves him. So in firm, when someone is in proximity with someone, visually it means full of love. Now, I could be sitting here looking at him, and we'll be talking very friendly like but later we'll find the story we become enemies what is the indication that we will become enemies there's a huge space between us but if two people are sitting side by side they are quarreling visually it means they will be okay after that why because they are in proximity you watch in movies two guys who are against each other but then uh, this guy says 
hey, uh, lend me your pen. So his hand comes over the body of this guy. That means they will be okay, guys. The other indication is the hero and the bad guy, the casting is they look almost similar. Who saw Kuch Kuch Hota Hai? Who yeah, yeah. you Everybody saw it. <laughs> Why uh, Salman Khan and uh, uh, Shah Rukh Khan, both of them, you look at them, you say, they are both good guys, isn't it? But the girl that Shah Rukh Khan is in love with is going to be married to the other guy. So they had to choose a guy who looks nice, handsome. Why? Because he ends up saying, oh, you love him. Okay, go. In real life, it will never happen. But they have to show that it can happen, but it must be structured properly. All right, then here's this uh, Seak, the guy who wakes up early and calls to prayer and so on. As he's walking, and this is the one that caused a huge controversy in Malaysia, and I had to appear on television to defend Yasmin Ahmad in a program called Phenomena Sini on RTM. So he's walking and he's uh, touching the, petting the dog and saying, uh, you already got, uh, got uh, run over by a car, uh, don't lie in the, in the middle of the road. And only then we see that when the dog walks away, it's got three legs. That means it must have been hit by a car. But the wonderful thing is, how did, it's like the dog is an actor listening to him and goes out. Do you know how difficult it is to direct children and animals? <laughs> uh, you ask CP. <laughs> so that means he has got something spiritual. And later, he breaks the kamyan into two, puts one into the pocket, and is able to trace that guy where he is. All right, next. And you see, uh, he comes to this place and switches on the light. There's absolutely nobody. That means he brings light to the world, symbolically, right? And then he knocks this thing like in the ancient days. No loudspeaker. Uh, 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 what do you call it? No... Uh, uh, ah, no technology here. He makes this sound and then he calls to prayer. Notice his acting. He is very calm, isn't it? Everything is fine with him, with the world. And then he comes to uh, admonish this guy who has been stealing money. Now look at the acting. The actors knew what they were doing. If you break it down into elements of design, he is a straight line, he is a diagonal line. So diagonal line is either dynamic or in danger of falling. But this one is very stable. So you see a director it does not just say action and cut. He has to understand how everything that he puts into the frame delivers the right meaning. Next. And then in schools you will have all these signs hanging, yes. giving all the positive things. But look at the adults. Ah. Uh, talking bad about that uh, woman. They know she's a prostitute. And then this Indian woman who's carrying something bangs it on the table. <laughs> we, no need words, we understand. Uh, e even in other films also, I think was it in Mosin, eh, they, she also showed the sign. We are trying to get the children to be on the right track, but you who are telling us to be on the right track, you are already haywire. <laughs> Next. Ah, yes. At the end of the film, we have the graphic. What's the graphic? The lamps are different, but the light is the same. Wow, she kena hantam by the ulama. They all criticize her. I think this is a quote from Jalaluddin Rumi, the Sufi. So, you can see how she used lights, light coming on. And then I was in the church during the shoot of this one. And she shot with light coming. So light is always associated with uh, religion and spirituality. And light falling on the face. See? So she carried on that theme. So she's saying that 
we are actually all the same. We are praying to the same God. So why quarrel? Thanks. You see the friendship between two different races visually being gotten across. So uh, when the mother recognizes her, this is orchid whom she never met, see the proximity, hand comes over her. That means, uh, and look at the way she acts. These are all not actors, you know. They are not professional actors. But after that, they became professional actors. During rehearsal, they are like a family. And when they come for the shooting, nobody carries a script. Because everybody knows what they have to do. And uh, two beds, left and right. And uh, the wife, Chinese wife, is angry with him. You don't eat pork for one day, also cannot. Uh. And of course, uh, Muslims, when they hear pork, boom. <laughs> See, but then she doesn't worry. So she's showing there are people who don't care about all of these kind of things. I said next to someone who was eating pork, I'm not eating, so what? <laughs> and here, then they get to talking and then they discover that they have a mutual friend. See, you discover this in a hospital where you cannot move and so on. So, hospital is also a good place. Next. And then, uh, what happens? The other guy, dead. And of course, uh, there's no crying like in uh, uh, Malay TV drama. And it's just empty bed. See? How it's indicated? Very clever. So, is that an index? Yeah, it's an index. We saw two people, then you don't see one person, gone lah. <laughs> and then, uh, she's trying, she said, for all the time we were married, we have always been quarreling. And women, uh, uh, imagine 30 years. And then, she tries to make up, you know. But you know, men, the ego is so big, the one, see, turns away. And of course, she starts to cry. That's the weakness of men. <laughs> Women cry, isn't it? Next. Tears. tears come out. Next. And he also reacts to her, but face is still on this side. <laughs> the ego is still there. Next. Okay, so as they walk home, there is this wooden house, colonial type. And I told her one day, all your, uh, the, the, the father and mother usually are living in colonial type house. I think it's because you remember the 1950s and how life was so good. Nobody condemned each other. Nobody called you babi or you makan babi and all that. How come under the British, everything was okay? Tapi under Malay, all haywire. Wow. It's like a slap in the face. So this is the reality that we are facing. And as they are passing by, uh, they stop and they want, uh, they are interested in the Quran reading. Why? They can feel that emptiness in them. And you know, we are this, how can we go in there and be part of them? And then, even though that woman has got HIV, the other woman is sitting there. So you see this uh, compassionate for, uh, for a fellow human being eh, is being carried on. And she teaches her the Quran. Why? Because she wants to be saved. She doesn't say it. Eh. Now, just before she died, she saw a firm called, what was it? The uh, Departed, uh, Departures, the Japanese firm. And it's about a, a beautiful girl who died. And in Japan now, they call people, pay them to come and wash the body, make it up and look as if the person is alive. And so this master and his student come and the student wipes her 
and then discovers it's a he. It affected her. Right? And uh, she told me she had seen it 10 times. I saw it a second time, it didn't work for me. And then the driver told me she was very moody just before she died, uh, didn't talk much, and she was also always talking about death. So, of course, we never expected. Two days before she died, I had lunch with her. Very normal. We feel a real vacuum, you know, without her. So, I also pulled that trick on uh, one guy wearing a white cap. <laughs> so, the last scene of the film <coughs> is the empty swing. So, we had empty bed, empty swing. You will not realize this, but after you watch the movie and you feel nice about it, it's because all these elements work to create form. That's what film is all about. Now, people don't get this. You talk to any PhD in film in Malaysia, they can tell, talk to you about form. They don't know what film is. Film is something very unusual. A lot of people haven't discovered what it is. Cinema is spiritual. Next. So, here we see this bad guy, K. Rahman. And uh, maybe I should not tell you the joke. I told Yasmin, she, she grinned at me. Maybe I'll tell it to you one of these days. <laughs> it's about that guy and about his name. So now, at the end, he's going to kill the girl, isn't it? Yeah. She has saved all this money. Mm -hmm. He's going to go home and give it for her sister to go to study or something like that, huh? isn't it? The door closes. We hear the scream. Mm -hmm. Then, away comes the call to prayer. What does that mean? She may be a prostitute, but don't judge her. But now, because she is... Uh, What's the word for it? Um, the, no, no, the uh, Aniyaya, uh, Zalim, the Zalimi. So, see, it's just showing the door. And you have to imagine it. So the film involves the audience rather than reveal everything. Next. Ah, the bad Malay guy. Do you know that she condemns Malays in many of her films? That's why many Malays were angry with her. <laughs> Remember the short trailer that she did about the guy on the LRT? Adeline Ramli was acting. So here's a blind guy coming up and uh, he's uh, sitting there. Uh, he pretends to be asleep. So they said, why you put a Malay guy there? She just said, what? I didn't see him as a Malay guy. And the ministry wanted her to change something. She refused. She can lie. <laughs> we have to live. See, they, uh, she likes the Chinese guy. And that guy is such a simple, childlike person. And she said, it's okay. Eh, you know, it's very malu-malu. And she gave, uh, he gave her a flower. And of course, this guy uh, looks down upon this fellow and say, oh, that guy took the flower from the wreath. Mm. <laughs> she said, uh, 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 I don't know what she said, but she's really pissing him off. Mm. Now, look at this. No words spoken. Again, we see, you know, this affectionate thing. Next. He reveals the character. What is the character of this guy? First, he's got slit eyes. <laughs> That's why she took him. I know him very well. But I don't consider him as a friend. But then the fact that he's wearing uh, shades. Dark glasses, yeah. yes. Watch any Hollywood movie. The guy who's wearing dark glasses is the bad guy. Mm. Now, the hero may wear dark glasses, but he will it take it off. So that's the sign. And then, look at this scene. Very nicely shot like a commercial. And she gets him 
because uh, when she found out that he's been uh, you know who hiring with uh, this woman and uh, he says oh she's just a piece of meat and she gets him to say that right in front of her and he thought that is going to be okay after that she pulls a fast one on him she led him up the garden path because he did the same thing to her next and uh, uh, so this is where she's now a totally different woman the woman that the husband should have turned her into but he calls her budak kecil and then she breaks down and cries when she sees the photos of her and jason next so now, now she's truly a woman so i was in the church at this time and i tell you it gave me goose pimples but when i saw it on film it didn't work i told her it should have been the one shot you could should not have cut the moment you cut you break the tempo so it was a nice scene pulling out and look at the door it's like the depiction of angel wings isn't it with light coming through so light light where they pray together and light on them so the lamps are different but the light is the same so the ulama who bash her didn't understand she was talking about light that gives hope next so here they are talking to each other and they discover that their friend mutual friend had died so that became very sobering for the chinese guy because uh you can see the person that they chose the face he doesn't like look like a good person that stock are home a very good actor and then look at the embracing would you see this scene anyway <laughs> maybe in the next couple of years we will begin to see because times have changed and it is for the better and there is a different mood in the country something unusual has happened and there's something spiritual behind the whole thing so it's a preparation reading the quran a preparation for death so because she's a simple woman does not you know, know about philosophy and so on so that's what the normal person will think of next so and often a uh, repeated word is alhamdulillah from yasmin praise be to god muslims have to read this every time they pray it is in the fatiha alhamdulillah rabbil alamin praise be to god the lord of all the worlds whether it's the hidden or the extrinsic so alhamdulillah is very important because you put god before everything for everything that we get and everything that we don't get we give praises next so only in ramadan suddenly everybody become religious very holy after ramadan they go back to the old ways when we are praying we are good people isn't it after prayer you do all the nonsense when you are at prayer when you are outside of prayer you should be the same person that is why uh, there are people who speak directly and we get hurt why because what they say and what is in their heart is the same but because we are in society we don't want to hurt people so sometimes we try to cover up so malay culture is very famous for this so you know when you come to uh woo a, a girl we have this procession coming with gifts and so on and then they tell the owner of the house we have as high as this mountain uh what we have come for is even higher 
we hear that you have a garden and in this garden you have a flower and we have come to pluck that flower it's in Malay culture you know that's how they come they don't tell you directly because they may not be successful so no feelings are hurt but Piramli in uh, which film was this Bujang Lapo along came Sharif Dol to get the hand of the Saloma but when he's rejected he said oh you reject me ah huh? uh, you wait lah revenge so that's another uh, negative side in Malay culture that Piramli put on the onto the screen now when we make a film all these elements come into play next so the last scene Orchid gets a call from the mother for Semayang Subuh, the early morning prayer. And then, nah, then we see the husband. Hey, this is Jason from Sepet. And say, who's that? Oh, it's my mother asking me to get up and pray. Exactly, Yasmin. Now, I clearly remember in the first edit, there was a line of dialogue from Jason. I had the weirdest dream. She took it away. She wanted to leave it open. Everything that happened before was a dream. So when Jason fell off the motorbike, he survived. And they got married. And in Mosin, we see them living happily with a child. <laughs> you were all fooled. Okay, next. So that's it. Thank you.